Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we're going to have a very quick discussion on how to compute the tangent to a curve. So the idea is actually really simple. So let's just draw a picture. Let's say you've got some curve, let's call it C here, right? And if you watched our previous video on parameterizing curves, uh, that's actually going to be critical for this discussion. So I'll recommend you check this out first if you haven't seen it. But if you have, you know that this curve C, we can parameterize this with some parametric, parametric representation or parametric equation, which basically specifies the location of this curve for any given independent variable t. So what I mean by that is that any point on this curve, let's pick something, I don't know, like say, uh, say here. Let's call this the point P, right? This is a, some point of interest. And what I want is I want the tangent to the curve C at this point P. So graphically, I think that's really clear. Everyone understands what a tangent vector is, right? It's, or a tangent line. It's basically the line, right, that just touches at the point P and the slope is equal to the curve at that point, right? So this here is our tangent line that we're interested in right, or your tangent vector, however you want to think about it, right? So what this parameterization R allows us to do, right, is that we can describe the location of this curve at any point like this point P. So this parameterization will basically give us a vector R like this, right? So we have R at T, right? So at some independent variable t value, you basically move t along and it goes, 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 goes. And at some value t, you end up here at this point p, right, that we're interested in, okay? So now the question is, can we leverage this par parametric representation to somehow compute this tangent line, right? Well, here's one thing we can consider. What happens if I just let t increase by uh, some amount, say delta t, right? That just means that t, instead of being here, you're going to move yourself along the curve some other distance to, I don't know, another point. Let's call this maybe like q or something like this here, right? So this q is the parameterization like this, right? So this is the vector r of t plus some delta t, right? If you let the independent variable go a little bit further, right, you get to that point q, okay? Now, I think everyone sees what's going on at this point. What's interesting now is if, if you look at this, right, there's a vector going from r of t to r of t plus delta t, right? That's this orange vector here, right? And would everyone agree that this orange vector can be described by Basically, you've got um, r of t plus delta t, right, minus r of t, right? That's what the orange vector is, right? And now, I think everyone sees that if I start letting delta t be small, right, this orange vector, this secant line, right, or this secant vector, is it's going to start walking this q back, right? As delta t gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller, this point p is going to come back, and eventually, right, the orange line is going to line up with the tangent line, right? So that's exactly what we're looking for. So what we could say here is that, let me just write this down. Um, well, maybe over here is a good spot to put it, right? So a tangent vector right, um, to the point, or to the curve C at P, right, and P we said was equal to R at T, right, so at that point, so this tangent vector, aka the red line, that's what this left hand side is, right, this is equal to basically um, R of T plus delta T, right, minus R of T, right, but then I want to look at the limit as delta T goes to zero, right? So, the, and, and again, I'm gonna stress the word A, right? This is just, there's, there's many tangent vectors, right? It could be here, to here, to here, to here. As long as you have a vector that's along this red line, that's a tangent vector, right? So this is one single possibility of that tangent vector, right? Well, I think everyone agrees, right? You remember from our discussion on vector mechanics that I can scale a vector, right? AKA this right side. I can scale it by some arbitrary scalar and I am not going to change the, uh, the direction of the vector, right? So maybe what we can say is another tangent vector to C at P equals R of T, right? Is I could basically take this expression over here, right? And I can scale it or multiply it by some arbitrary constant. So again, let me write this here. I'll write the exact same thing first. Delta T minus R of T. Um, 
and then I take the limit as delta t goes to zero, right? And I can arbitrarily scale this by some amount, right? So, so the amount I'm going to scale it by is I'm going to scale by the one over delta t, right? This is just some scalar number, right? So if I do that, I just multiply this whole thing by one over delta t and you get this, right? Okay. So if you look at this over here, right? Um, in our previous discussion where we were talking about, we had another video on um, scalar and vector functions and vector derivatives, right? This entire side, this is just the derivative of the parameterization R of t with respect to t, right? Because look at this, this is basically a rise over a run and I take the limit as delta t goes to zero. So this is the actual derivative. So what we end up with here is this is nothing more than, let's write it as, um, d dt, right, of r of t, right? Or you'll commonly see this referred to in the text or literature as r prime of t, right? So what this means is this is just you take your parameterization of the curve c, you take its derivative with respect to the independent variable t, and that gives you apparently, again, yet another, another tangent vector to c at p. So again, this is the red line that we're interested in. So to get the red line, this tangent line, all you do is you take your parameterization and you take its derivative with respect to t. So let's look at a quick example of this. And in fact, I'm going to use the exact same example we used in our discussion on um, parametric equations and parametric representations. That was this idea of we had this 3D elliptical um, helix right? And we said that the way this thing worked is we said you had some parameterization r of t that looks like um, a cosine of t, b sine of t, and then the z value was c t, right? Okay, and what this gave you in three-dimensional space, right? Let me just quickly sketch it out. In fact, we're going to go to the computer in just a second to look at this, um, you know, x, y, z, right? This thing gave you this sort of upward spiraling helix like that, okay? So now what we can ask ourselves is, all right, how do I go ahead and find the tangent to this curve at any point here? So I want this tangent vector here, or maybe here, or maybe over here, right? I'm interested in these tangent vectors to the curve as you move around, right? So apparently all we have to do here is go ahead and compute r prime of t which basically means take the derivative of this first element with respect to t. So we see that's really darn easy, right? We get minus a sine t, and then take the derivative of the second element. So what do we end up with? With b cosine t, and then take the derivative of this third element, you just end up with c, right? So here, apparently this will describe the tangent vector at any given point along the curve, as long as you know the independent variable t value that you're interested in, right? So what we can do is um, let's go over to the board, uh, to, to Mathematica actually, to the computer, and just plot this quantity for various values of t so we can see what this tangent vector looks like. And maybe what I will mention before we get there, before we actually go over to the board, uh, to the computer, let's sit here on the board and I'll show you the one easy way to visualize this is um, what I'm going to end up doing, right, is we can obviously plot this point p, right? And now we have a method to compute a tangent vector. So this tangent vector, let me draw it, uh, shoot, I'm running out of colors. Let's draw it as purple, All right? So what we have here is we can get some vector here. Let's call this, um, we said this is r prime of t, right? This is some vector, let's call it u. You know, all it is, it's, it's, it's a vector, right? So all we're going to do in Mathematica when we go to the computer is I'm going to basically draw this point P of interest, okay? And then we are going to draw an arrow com that connects from point P to some point over here. And you can see that this point, this is nothing more than P plus U, right? Or P plus R prime, right? So that will hopefully give us a, a graphical representation of the vector as it moves along this curve, right? Okay, so that's all we want to do. Let's jump over to Mathematica because I think that's going to be a lot easier to visualize than watching me sit here and trying to mess around with things on the board. 
All right, so here we are in Mathematica. So let's see, first thing we're gonna do for our example is just put in our parameterization as we discussed on the board here. And then we just need to take its derivative with respect to t to get the expression for the tangent. So let's go ahead and do that right there. So here it is. And now let's use the same constants we had in our previous video. Again, I'm just gonna pick some arbitrary numerical values for a, b, and c just so we can get um, numbers in here. And now this next block of code, um, I'll walk through it, but uh, it's a little bit dense, but don't worry. All we're doing here is, you can see it's really inter uh, simple. All I'm going to do is first, I'm going to go ahead and plot this point of interest P that we talked about at some critical value of T, some, some independent variable value that we care about. Once we have that, we can go ahead and compute the derivative, right, at that point, because we just um, had it up top, right? We took the derivative, so this is going to get us the vector u, right? This is the tangent vector that we talked about. And now all I'm doing underneath here is I'm just making a whole bunch of visualizations so we can basically see these two items, right? These are the only two things really of interest, right, is the point p and then the tangent vector at the point p. All this stuff down here in this show command is just a lot of plotting to make things look nice. So I'm going to plot the curve, the entire parametric plot um, of, of the curve between two arbitrary values. I guess I'm using t from running from 0 to 10. And then I'm just going to label the plot with some other stuff. And at the top of the top of the plot, I'm also going to just print out the length of this vector u. Because what we're going to see is that this is not necessarily a unit vector, right? Don't get confused with the name u and think that it's always a unit vector. Remember, this is just the derivative of your parameterization with respect to t. So there's no guarantee that this is going to be unit length. You can totally normalize this if you want, but in general, this, this tangent vector will not be of unit length. Okay, so that's all I'm doing here. This is just plotting the curve. Now, all I'm doing is I'm going to plot the point P of interest as a green dot. That's what this is. And now let's scroll down a little bit. And like we talked about on the board, the way I'm going to visualize the tangent curve is I am just going to draw a magenta arrow between the point P and then to some other point, which is just P plus the, the vector U, right? So this should just give me a point along the tangent curve, right? So again, that's all this is doing. This is just fancy Mathematica code to get you this nice visualization so you can see, again, here's the, 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 the entire curve. And then you can see some things like, the point P is just this dark green circle, and then the magenta is the tangent at uh, of the curve at the point P. And what you can do now is I am just going to move the point of interest by varying the, the parameter T, right? So you can see as this thing slides along, this indeed does get you the tangent vector uh, to this curve at any point, right? And again, let me just play this as an animation so you can see this thing working, and I'll spin this around a little bit so hopefully you can see. Um, and again, notice, right, that the magnitude of the vector is not always unity. In fact, I don't know if it's ever unity, right? Here, in, in this case, this magenta line is two units long. But again, you can normalize this if you want. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what's going on, what this calculation gets you. It basically buys you a way to compute the tangent vector to this curve at any point along it as long as you know the parameterization value t that you're interested in so uh okay with that being said i think that's probably a good spot to leave it we are going to take this idea and uh now next talk about things like um computing links of curves and we're going to use this later on down the road for things like line integrals so this is uh just a foundational building block to some future discussions and hopefully we'll catch you at one of these future discussions and we can all learn something new together so until then i think i'm gonna sign off talk to you later bye